What Kirby Smart is doing there is remarkable. That's what ESPN's Mel Kuyper Jr., the draft analyst, right? The draft guru. That's what he had to say about Kirby Smart and the Georgia Bulldogs. And we know he's speaking the truth, right? We know that's a factual statement. What Kirby Smart has done uh, with the Georgia program, especially from 2017 until now, uh, I don't think he could have done a better job except maybe beat Alabama in that first national title game. But he has built the next Alabama. He has built the standard, not only in the NFL draft now as they break records, it seems like almost every year. And we're going to dig into that. But when a guy like Mel Kuyper Jr., who talks to NFL coaches, talks to NFL GMs, and they're all saying the same thing, like, wow, we go down to Georgia's pro day or we just do any scouting on these Georgia players and they jump off the tape, right? Whether they're a former five-star, former three-star, what Kirby Smart has done, right, uh, which is evaluate talent, sign their top guys, develop them, and turn them into NFL players, they're doing it better than anyone right now. They, they are. They are linebacker university. They're offensive line university. They put quarterbacks uh, into the draft. They put running backs, tight ends, defensive backs, defensive linemen. Are you kidding me? Are You name it, right? Punters, kickers. Um, they're going uh, to the NFL from Kirby Smart and his, uh, and his team. And that's the program that he's built. It's built to stay. That's the big thing. And they're going to have 10 more guys probably drafted in April. But it, it's not just the fact that they're getting drafted early. A lot of them, right? A lot of guys are getting drafted really early. It's more than that. It's, I mean, they're doing big things in the NFL right now. You go back to Georgia's record-breaking uh, NFL draft in 2022. They had 15 guys taken, which is still kind of mind-boggling. First overall, Trayvon Walker had uh, double-digit sacks last year. He's turning into a real game-changer for the Jaguars. Uh, Jordan Davis doing his thing in Philly. I think he's getting better and better, but he's no doubt he's an impact type of guy. He was a 15th overall. Quay Walker had 100-plus tackles for the Packers. He was 22nd overall. Devonta Wyatt, I think, has quietly made a nice impact for the Packers. You'd have to ask a Green Bay fan more, but he's out there. He's playing. He's making an impact, or at least some from what I've gathered. Uh, and Lewis Seen, who has just had some injury issues. But all those guys are first-rounders. George Pickens in the second round, one of the best wide receivers in the NFL right now. If he had a legitimate quarterback going to him, maybe now he does. And Russell Wilson, and or maybe Justin Fields, I guess, if he can win the job. George Pickens is one of the more talented receivers in the NFL. Probably top 15, I'd say. Maybe top 10 if he had a better quarterback. James Cook is one of the best running backs in the NFL right now. N'Kobe Dean uh, is... Playing, I think he could absolutely start for the Eagles next year. Channing Tindall, I think, is on an NFL roster. Samir White finished the season really strong for the Raiders. He could have a really solid season next year. Jake Camarda with the Bucks is one of the best punters in the league. Jamari uh, Sawyer has turned into a bona fide starting NFL offensive lineman. Darian Kendrick uh, made a lot of tackles. That's not necessarily a good thing for the Rams, but that whole draft, almost every single one of those guys has made a significant impact in the NFL, and they all got better at Georgia. And I think that's where you have to really tip your hat to Kirby Smart and this staff. Not only are they getting five stars, like yes, they're bringing in talent. They should be competing for championships every year, right? They're always one of the most talented teams in the country. They're finishing top three, sometimes top one in the recruiting rankings. They should be really good, right? But they're taking those players and making them better, right? The three stars, the Lad McConkeys that no one wanted but Georgia, right? Same with Jordan Davis. Those guys turned into two of the best players of the Kirby Smart era. Um, the five stars. Trevon Walker was one of the best players in the country. He, he turned out. N'Kobe Dean, number one linebacker in America out of high school. Turned out he was really good. Quay Walker, five star, first round pick, right? Isaiah Wilson, five star offensive lineman, first round pick. Andrew Thomas, very high four star, very high four star. Everyone knew he was going to be very good. Number four overall. Uh, it's what they do. If you want an offensive lineman, you can look to Athens, Georgia. If you want a linebacker, you can look to Athens, Georgia. Um, they're going to put another cornerback possibly in the first round. Um, next year, they'll have Malachi Starks, a safety probably first round, maybe Micah Williams. But, you know, this year, we're going to see Brock Bowers go in the first round. We're going to see another offensive tackle, Marius Mims, go. Um, maybe Kamari Laster. Maybe Javon Bullard. Maybe Lad McConkey. Maybe A.D. Mitchell. Who's a dog? Let's not get it twisted. I don't mean to trigger a lot of 
Texas fans out there. But A.D. Mitchell is, uh, you know, he, he's a Georgia Bulldog first. Uh, when he gets drafted, that's it's going to be another first round wide receiver. Uh, probably not another first round wide receiver because that happened in a while. But another wide receiver who got better at Georgia, who is going to do big things in the NFL. But last year, Georgia had 10 picks. 2022, they had the 15. 21, they had nine picks. Uh, 2020, they had seven picks. Uh, in 2019, they had seven, 2018, six, 27, just the lone ranger, right? Isaiah McKenzie was the only guy drafted after that um, really tough 2016 season. After that, Kirby said, nah, I'm turning this program into the monster. It should be into the machine that it should be. Not only from a recruiting standpoint, but a winning standpoint, a culture standpoint in the program. And then we're going to just dominate the NFL draft as well. Um it, it, the machine's still going. I know they didn't win a national championship last year. They lost the wrong game at the wrong time, but they're going to be back. They're going to compete for another one. And what they're doing in the NFL draft is not going to, that's just not going to go away. They're not going to disappear, right? People, these GMs are always going to look to Athens, just like they always look to Tuscaloosa. They always look to Baton Rouge. They always look to Columbus, Ohio. Uh, but George has kind of elevated themselves as the number one program to look for, to look at if you're an NFL GM or an NFL coach. And they're proving every year that these guys are ready to make an impact at the NFL level. Um, now, some guys will get hurt. Like, you know, I still think Aziz Ojolari should have been a first rounder. That's my guy. You all know that. Uh, I've known him for years and years and years. Uh, I still think he could have been the best, one of the best outside linebackers in the game if he could just stay a little healthy. But uh, Tyson Campbell's had a nice little career. Uh, we saw what Jalen Carter did last year. Broderick Jones could be one of the best offensive tackles in uh, that division next year. Nolan Smith, I think, is going to play more next year. Um, Christopher Smith, my guy, not really playing a ton uh, with the Raiders, but he's playing. Uh, Keely Ringo, I think, can play a little bit more for the Eagles next year. You just yeah, just ask the Packers front office. Ask the, the Eagles front office. Ask Pittsburgh's front office. Is there something special? Is there something different about the dogs down in Athens? They're all going to say, yeah, yeah, there is. We have no no problem picking a Georgia Bulldog that's played in big games, that knows what it takes uh, to be on a championship level team, to play at a championship level, uh, what an elite program looks like, how uh, a championship program practices and works and competes in the offseason. You know if you pick a Georgia Bulldog that you're going to get – that out of him. You're going to get a guy that works hard and loves to practice and loves to compete who still has his best football ahead of him, who knows how to get better because he got better at Georgia. But, you know, again, you ask NFL draft experts, they're going to tell you, man, a guy who makes a lot of plays in Athens is, is doing it the right way. He earned that playing time over another really, really good player. Uh, he knows what discipline is. He knows what playing with a team looks like. He knows that it's not about you and that you're playing for something bigger. And it takes someone uh, to do that at the NFL level as well. And it's different. They're getting paid. Guys are kind of looking out for themselves, number one. They got to feed the family, right? Um, but the goal is to still win a Super Bowl or a national championship. That still should be the goal. Uh, but now the goal is let's make as much money as I can. And if I'm able to win a championship, that's great too. Uh, it's just different times. But at the end of the day, these NFL coaches and GMs know that what Kirby Smart is building is special. He's built a monster. And if you play and thrive under Kirby Smart, there's a good chance that you could do the same thing at the NFL level. We've written about this a lot. And you can read more about this over on Dog Post. Um, you can read a lot of these stories for free. You can do that by signing up to our newsletter. That link is right down below. It's in the description. It takes five seconds. Might be the smartest thing you do all day. Sign up to Dog Post for free and read a lot of free stories that we have over on the website. If you're watching this video now, that means there should be free stories on the website. Uh, Kirby Smart spoke uh, today. We should have some practice notes up on the side, more recruiting news. So make sure you check us out if you've been enjoying this content. But you know, I, I love covering... Uh, this team, because it's easy. I get to cover a lot of good news, sometimes bad news, especially on the recruiting trail. But it's fun covering the NFL draft, too. And it's fun covering high school because you get to watch guys like Trayvon Walker and Nolan Smith participate. And, you you know, I, I remember when those guys wanted offers so bad. I remember Jermaine Burton coming up to me after, a, 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 I think it was a Nike camp at Buford. He had zero offers, and he just wanted me to take a picture of his little sheet of his combine results and tweet it. Uh, so it's fun to watch these guys about, you know, it's a, 
earn their dream. I remember watching Broderick Jones in high school, driving a, a decent way uh, to watch him play. And, you know, he was a first rounder last year. Flew to Las Vegas to watch Darnell Washington and Keely Ringo because I knew they were going to Georgia. That's what insiders do. We find that stuff out uh, early on in the process. You know, I'm not flying to Las Vegas to watch two players uh, for no reason. You know, we, we knew that <laughs> Georgia was in a good position to land them. Now they're both playing in the NFL. So it's fun. Uh, and a lot of dogs are going to hear their name called early in the April draft and probably the year after that and the year after that. So thanks. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the content. Thanks for watching this video. Hope to see you on the website.